Hello, this is Level Lord Bo, back with another sh uh, ship review video, and today we'll be reviewing the German submarine line. Now, this video is a uh, follow-up to the previous video on the U.S. submarines. If you haven't watched it already, definitely go check it out. Uh, but again, since these this line has been out for a while, I think it's best to be able to do like an actual line video now. Uh, since Wargaming has announced that there will be no longer any major changes uh, to submarine mechanics. So I think it's a good time to talk about the line now since it is in final state. So with that out of the way, uh, in today's video, we'll, you guys will be looking at the tier 8 submarine uh, for the German for the German submarine line. Uh, so you guys are aware, uh, at the time when I was getting these replays, the tier 10 was not available. So you guys can see the gameplay of the tier 8. Again, the tier 6 and the tier 8 play very similar since they have front and rear torpedoes. But for the tier 10, the tier 10 only has front torpedoes. So this is a reference. The front, the, the tier 10, you, you'll want to play a little bit. You'll want to play more further back, not be as close um, as the tier 6 and the tier 8. Because pretty much if a submarine gets behind you or something gets behind you in the tier 10, you're not going to be able to torp it. So just throwing that out there. First up is the build, which will be shown on the top right. You can pause the video at any time to be able to look at the build or take a picture of it if needed. So, totally up to you if you want to do that. Now, for the German submarine, sub, the German submarine line, it has an average survivability, a long-range, powerful homing torpedoes, a stronger but very short-range uh, dummy torpedo or a standard torpedoes. It can reload each tube independently, so it's effectively a very fast reload. I was able to test this um, a few days ago uh, when I was streaming. I was able for the tier 10. If you have adrenaline rush and you're at like 200 health, you can effectively launch a torpedo every seven seconds if you sink it out correctly. So pretty much you can infinitely launch torpedoes for every seven seconds. So it's pretty effective at reloading if you know what you're doing. So moving on from that, uh, long range sonar ping. Uh, has high top speed and good turning and diving. It does have the best diving capacity due to the large reserves and the reserve battery consumable. So definitely take note of that in the build as well. Uh, whenever we did focus more on the batteries. But at the same time, I'm kind of starting to lean a little bit away from doing that. A little bit. Mostly due to the fact that in a submarine, you mostly just stay on the surface or periscope. But if you're at further distance or you're trying to like so technically with the germans you can kind of sneak through the middle more uh with how much diving capacity you have so you can always do as a reference as well um you can just you can see how i played the submarine in this video so you guys can kind of take that as a reference for the tier eight and the tier six play style now the german submarines are better suited for the aggressive gameplay their long dive capacities uh, reserve battery consumable lets them sit near enemies for extended dura durations, uh, awaiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. They are the masters of shotgun tactic, getting close to an enemy and smashing them with undodgeable torpedoes before diving to safety. Though excellent at close range, Germans are the German subs are still effective at mid range and long range due to their long range spammable torpedoes. Now, the German subs are, would say they're superior to the U.S. counterpart at the long to mid ranges. Um, with the fact of how long range the torpedoes are pretty much at the longer ranges and the shotgunning they're better than the american counterpart now positioned properly german subs can rain down a hail of homing torpedoes while spotting for the team uh, if the enemy gets too close the german subs can shotgun them out of existence and do it again in less than a minute to the next ship again though with them making it where the line is kind of like a random rng where torpedoes go it is essentially harder to shotgun but at the same time, if there's a broadside battleship in front of you, you're not going to miss that. But if there's a DD rushing you like bow in, it's going to be it's going to be a lot harder to hit that because of the random RNG of whenever you're launching the torps. For gameplay, I have brought back Iron Man, EN submarine expert. So we'll be I'll be asking him a few questions and we'll be going over the base of how to play the German submarine line. So first up, uh, what should the German submarines do at the start of the match? Uh, the German submarines, they can, uh, as with the, uh, both submarines, they're slow as well. You can just stay generally towards the middle of the map and pushing out to the flanks is 
probably not advised out of one in ten lines. Uh, and you should uh, stay on the surface as much as possible using the dive mechanics to uh, disengage from being spotted. If there's a CV in your game, that's probably what you would do. Uh, for the German submarines, though, due to their high dive capacity, uh, for the tier 10, for sure, this is a thing you could possibly do. Um, you're, with your high dive capacity, you can actually go undetected to the enemy spawn at the beginning of the game if you choose to do so. And as long as you choose a good route, uh, the downside of that is you'll be putting yourself at a great risk into, you know, just popping up in the middle of the enemy fleet and you'll have a very low um, dive capacity to escape. So it'd be at your own risk for all for sure if you do that. I've only done that one time ever, but you can definitely do it if you want to. And would you say this is good for only the tier 10 since the 10 has the highest diving capacity and the highest speed underwater? Oh, for sure. The tier 10, for sure. This is what you, how you, you, what you would do with the tier 10. The tier 6 and 8, probably not so much. Yeah, because the tier 6 and 8 are pretty slow underwater, if I remember. So. Yeah, only the tier 10 is equal or faster underwater. Mm -hmm. uh, so how should you use the sonar pings for the German subs? Well, the with the Germans, the dummy torps have an extremely short range compared to the the uh, homing torpedoes. But in the same breath, you should only use your pings to either ensure that the torpedoes are going to hit or just not at all, because I th think that the German submarines should remain as stealthy as possible. OK, for sure. And which submarines, sorry, which ships are the greatest threat to the Germans, do you think? German submarines? Uh, well, as with uh, all submarines currently, DDs are the greatest for killing subs outright with their de uh, death charge capacity. And it just depends on how aggressive you are with your submarine. So if you're overly aggressive, destroyers can just run over you and drop death charges and wipe you out. If you're staying back and you get spotted, it just having to get spotted, then battleships and cruisers with the death charge planes. But uh, the uh, German destroyers have a low detection, so you can actually just edit that, not do that part. That'll be for the next part, next question. So how would you typically position the German submarines? Um, uh, they have an extremely low detection, so you can push in actually pretty close and get good spotting on enemy ships and where they're going, which is this submarine's greatest asset, if you ask me. Uh, which in turn, uh, being pushed up close will help you get uh, torpedoes to hit on the larger enemy ships in the mid or back line, since you'll be close up. Mm -hmm. What about any last tips you have for the German submarine? Any final tips for how to play them? Yeah, for sure. Uh, as I said before, I feel like the, the German submarines need to stay stealthy and not give up their position you, and you should use it to surprise enemies uh you should keep tabs on the enemy sub locations because your submarine surveillance outranges most other subs and you can spot them underwater without them knowing where you are and how would you play differently compared to the, like the tier six and eight and the tier 10 could you describe maybe like the different play styles for them um well trying to think the different play styles tier 10 is definitely it's i feel like it's so much far and above different and better than the other ones just because of the torpedo range and the torpedo reload and the, and the torpedo capacity uh the tier six and eight they well it'd probably be a little bit better at engaging the uh enemy submarines just because they have front and rear torpedoes since if you at if you happen to get caught out of position and the enemy sub is behind you, then you would uh, have a little bit better defensive measures. Yep, but thank you so much, Iron Man, for your advice and answering the questions. Do greatly appreciate it. Uh, that is going to be it for what we're going to be talking about information-wise. So at this point, I'm just going to be watching the replay and going over what's going to be going on. Pretty much at this point, you guys can see I'm kind of spreading out the torps. Normally, whenever you're trying to get homing torps on someone you want to spread out the torps so they're more likely to hit the individual you're trying to hit um so as you can see i'm pretty much just that's what i did earlier 
I believe I'm trying... I haven't watched this game in a while. So I believe I'm trying to get that battleship that's sitting behind the island. I was hoping he would pop out. Maybe he's going to. Is he going to pop out? Uh, nope. He did a little tease there. Just messing with me. You son of a gun. Can't believe you've done this to me. I did get a ping on him, though, which is nice. But it looks like he's just going to reverse back behind the island. That is kind of an issue if you're trying to play a sub and you're in the middle of the map like this and there's someone at the island. You're not going to really be able to... You know, you can't really torp someone behind an island unless you do get a double ping. Maybe you could curve around, but at this point, you can see I'm not really going to be able to. But as you can see, since this is a standard battle, I am kind of trying to help control the middle of the map. Um, help do some spotting for my team. Uh, that's what I was trying to do from both of maps. Control the middle. Uh, get Try to take out their submarine or DD early, uh, such as that. Now, the, the German submarine line, I'm a super big fan of, personally, for the tier 6 and 8. Uh, for the tier 10, though, I prefer playing it a lot further back, just from my own personal experience. Uh, because of the fact that tier 10 doesn't have the rear torps, only has the front. So, normally, the tier 8 and the tier 6 for the German is actually really strong. Uh, the tier 8 one is actually, I think, is the best out of the line, in just my own opinion. But again, the tier 10, if you have adrenaline rush and you are timing your torps perfectly for the for the tier 10, uh, the U190, uh, I believe. I always get the numbers mixed up, so um, I don't think it's the U190. I always forget the numbers. If you guys could remind me in chat what the number is, uh, I would appreciate it. But if you have like a thousand health, if you get like super low health in the tier 10 submarine, uh, and since the torps do reload all at the same time, like individual, like uh, all the tubes will reload at the same time, pretty much if you launch them all, you can pretty much get the reload down to like seven. It pretty much makes it where you can launch a torpedo every seven seconds. So it gets to reload down the torpedoes for like 38, 39 seconds. So you can pretty much launch torpedoes every seven seconds. Now you can't do that with the lower tier, but for the higher tier, you can. You can still space them out on the lower tier both for the american and the germans but it's a little trick that you can do because at the same time here even though i'm i at this as you can see i'm doing the little circle technique where you pretty much try to get all your torps off the front torps and the rear torps i should have been a little bit better at spacing out my torpedoes i'll call that a mistake out sometimes i just want to spam all the torps out but the thing is if they have dcp or if they have dcp'd you're not going to hit your torps you're going to miss so it's better to space out your torps and kind of like uh, give it like a 10 second burst sometimes it depends upon the reload 10 second or 7 second you can uh for the americans i normally launch launch two at a time in that burst since they do reload two at a time for the germans they kind of reload all at the same time so you can kind of do a little differently but normally you would want to separate the torps as in give it like a space give them spacing in between the torpedo launches so if they dcp and miss they're not going to be able to dodge all the torps, just the one that they DCP'd. And then over time, you could then reping it and the torpedoes you're launching in that sequence will keep going. So just a little tip there that I, I noticed in my own gameplay, uh, since we're going to be going over the replay here. Now, at this point, as you can tell, I'm mostly staying underwater due to the CV. I'm trying not to get spotted. They do have the uh, aerial ASW from those ships that are over there. The vision's actually really bad, so that's kind of hard for me to see it sometimes. But again, I make the dumb mistake of just launching all the torpedoes at once. One thing, though, that if you get really good at is if you can learn how to double ping really, like, in good succession. Like, if you can double ping someone really quick, it, the, the double ping pretty much makes it where it's almost impossible to dodge. It's super difficult for ships to dodge the double ping. Now, the singular ping, they have a lot better chance of dodging. But uh, for him, uh, he didn't really have a chance, so it's kind of a disaster for that one. Now, let's see, who is the next victim? Oh, we have a nice uh, we have a nice battleship over there. Very nice, very nice. Hopefully, we will be able to get them. Now, one thing I have also noticed while playing submarines, I don't know if I'm the only one that's noticed this, but have you noticed how you can legit just get a ton of base XP from submarines? Have you guys noticed that at all? 
you get like a really a lot of base XP by just playing them or not even doing that much damage. I'm actually curious if you guys could comment what are your top XP matches. I actually would greatly appreciate that information. Like I'm actually curious. I think my top base XP match for a submarine at tier 10, I think it's around uh like man, I like 35, 3600 maybe. I haven't really done like super, super high matches with them, but I think 3,600 or 3,800 is like max with them. But I don't know. There's a lot of people that are a lot better than me. So I'm definitely curious what your guys' top base XP matches are. If you could also let me know what summary did in as well, I'd greatly appreciate as well. So as you can see here, I am pinging the, that battleship from earlier that was behind the island. So thank that I was able to get him again. But I am, like, again, I'm, I'm going to keep calling out my own mistake here. I keep on launching all of them, even though I shouldn't be. Because, look, now he, he DCP'd, and there goes all those torps that I just wasted. And, yep, those aren't going to be able to hit. Wait, wait. No, I forgot. I actually forgot about the Japanese DCP. It's super short. I bet. Eh, yeah, I still messed up. Because, like, if he's coming right at you, you can't be trying to curve the bullet on the torps. You gotta just launch him right at him. Especially if he's just W-ing at you. Because at this point, he's just W-ing right at me. He's kind of sick and tired of my game. So, I understand that for sure. Like, submarines in general are just a really a nuisance class at this point. Like, they're very hard to spot. They're very nuisance filled with uh, the homing torpedoes and the pings. Sometimes I'll just ping people just to annoy them, just to de make them DCP. So, in the day, uh, yeah, definitely for sure. So, for the match, it did 105,000 damage, 4 kills, 20 torpedo hits, and made 404,000 credits. That is without any bonuses, by the way. Just a straight up there. And I did 2,487 base XP. Damn, that's actually pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. But, yep, um, if you guys have any questions or concerns, definitely leave them in the comments down below. But, yep, this is Overlord Bo. Thank you all for all your support. Um, but yeah, if you guys like this sort of uh, replay review, definitely, if you guys like this, just definitely let me know. But yeah, I'll talk to y'all later.